The U.S. plans to cut deep into its funding for the United Nations, but that move could end up costing more in the long run. The amount that could really be saved is, is a speck compared with overall U.S. spending. Three experts told Newsy why it's actually in the U.S.'s national interest to continue its historically strong support for the United Nations. For starters, the UN helps the United States save on military costs. By using UN peacekeepers, the US often doesn't have to put its own military on the ground for missions in some of the world's most dangerous conflicts. Peacekeepers uh, are, are, are much less costlier because states share the burden, right? It's not one actor, but it's all these actors coming together. The Trump administration's preliminary budget includes cuts to UN peacekeeping mission funding while giving a hefty boost to US defense spending. But even at a broader level, the United Nations provides for security in very important regions around the world where American soldiers are already deployed. So we've got to have the UN working in partnership with the United States and the US military to advance our objectives. One of those objectives is keeping countries outside the US stable, which likely means fewer issues in the long run. One thing about conflict is a lot of conflicts recur. So I'm actually one that would argue that aid agencies and that sort of efforts need to be present for a significant period of time to prevent a relapse. And where there are conflicts, there are people fleeing those conflicts. Gowan says the best approach is having the UN help refugees in regions where they originally lived, like Africa and the Middle East. If the UN was not there, that would mean there would be more people trying to get into Europe and there would be more demands for the U.S. to take more refugees. The Trump administration has not been a fan of refugee resettlement. An executive order from the president aims to cut the resettlement numbers in the U.S. by 50 percent. It got tied up in court. Keeping countries stable can also hinder terrorism groups from expanding. Ultimately, the way to keep young people out of ISIS is to ensure that they have hope and opportunity. The United Nations, in partnership with the U.S. foreign aid program, is a crucial element in providing that type of hope. Other world powers may also move to fill in the gaps created by U.S. funding cuts to the U.N. What it means is that countries like China and Russia, which don't necessarily share our viewpoint about global issues, uh, will fill the gap. Of course, the UN has its fair share of issues that need to be addressed, but it has a reach that's hard to compete with. It's nice to think that NGOs could fill that gap. It's nice to think that charities could fill that gap. But to be honest, in that sort of complex emergency, where violence is prevalent, where there are often major threats to aid workers, really the UN is one of the very few actors that can, can function credibly. And there's some skepticism if Congress will actually approve the cuts. It's dead on arrival. It's not going to happen. It would be a disaster. If you take soft power off the table, then you're never going to win the war. A bill introduced in the House in January aims to have the U.S. pull out of the U.N. completely. But since then, not much has happened with it. And Trump's budget is still being hammered out. But some cuts have already happened. In April, the U.S. eliminated its funding for the U.N. Population Fund. That affects women in over 150 countries. As for the peacekeeping funding, 2017's budget expires in June. It could be months before Congress actually decides on what other UN agencies may see a cut.